artist on record, your ultimate intimate conversation with your favorite artist, sad breaking news, former Scorpions drummer, James Kotek uh, has passed away at the age of 61 years old. Uh, he's been a guest on the show and we'll play a clip of my interview with him. Great guy was a fun guest and I'll condolence to the family and fans of James right now. Here goes our interview. It all starts now. Don't touch that dial. And Kingdom Come, there we are. There we Watch are. Hair. Look at that hair. I, I mean, look at the hair over there. You know. I'm on well. Let me let me get, I have the, the logo. I'm sorry. I don't want to nobody get mad no. at me over there. So this this band right there, what was going what was the scene like now? Where well, we were really a, what you a, your typical LA scene type band because it was like the strip was ex had exploded and was going like I mean I mean you go down on on any night of the week and there's you know a hundred plus people out handing out flowers on the sidewalk you couldn't even get into most of the clubs there's bands running seven nights a week uh, you know four or five bands a night and King of Come never did that we we uh, you know the rec it was signed to Polygram Records and we. We're, we're in a rehearsal studio. We'd go out and, and goof off and stuff. But yeah. Lenny was insisting. He goes, no way. We're never going to play that Sunset Strip thing. And I'm like, oh, okay, but shouldn't we go play somewhere? And we didn't. We we went and made an album in August in, of 87 in Vancouver. And uh, I was up there for several weeks. It was phenomenal. And we did it with Bob Rock. It was Legendary. His first, I know. And it was his first... Uh, kind of album outside of his world from Canada, uh, first international band. And uh, man, dude, I learned so much and he was phenomenal. And uh, that first album, I'm super mega proud. The second one's great too. And that was with Keith Olsen. But um, who, you know, who, who did, did, who did then, Keith Olsen, we talked about earlier. He did yeah. Springfield, Fleetwood Mac, amazing producer. Uh, White Stack. I mean, God. The, it's did he do Charlie yeah. Sexton? Am I? Oh, no. The King, that's Keith Forrest. I think he did. Because that uh, name was always popping up. He did, yeah. I mean, countless. Uh, he did, uh, I mean, Jesse's Warner cool. and this one and that one. And, you know, God rest his soul, man. He was, he was treated me so well. He hired me probably for at least 12 different albums. Because, number one, I'm a pretty good drummer. Number two, I live not even a mile from his studio. And I was always hanging around there anyway. I mean, getting to work with him, oh. with that producer, because one of my best favorite drum sounds, did he, did he do Rumors? Did he do the Fleetwood Mac Rumors record? Yeah, I think he mixed it. I don't know if he, he did the, the, the whole thing because they went through a few guys on that one. And he kind of got the reputation of saving an album with major artists. And he did. He uh, That White Snake album was uh, the one with Still oh, yeah. the Night. Yeah, I forgot had, about that. The biggest album ever. And, and um, he rescued that album. It was like a disaster because there was like every track had like 40 guitar tracks and all this crazy stuff. And he fixed it. Wow. Well, wow. now, now, when you went to Canada, was that the studio with Loverboy? They were like one of the first. Bands. Yeah, love. Uh, it was Little Mountain Studios, and That's that was right. Loverboy. Aerosmith did all their albums. Bon Jovi. Um, it was just ACDC. Everybody recorded a Little Mountain. Who was anybody? And that's why when we went there, I didn't know anything about it. And we got there, and I'm looking like, wow, you know. And while we were recording in one studio, Steven Tyler was there working on songs for the Aerosmith album, which was good with became their big huge comeback and uh he was he was a riot man uh, to hang wow. out with and he wasn't drinking or he was sober at the time and uh, yeah we kind of followed his lead and stuff and this I, I can't even describe it how uh, amazing it was Gee, what's lenny do these days now lenny okay. is uh well he lives in hamburg germany uh -huh. and uh, he loves staying home i just started talking to him back in 2010 about revamping kingdom come Anytime we'd play in Hamburg, he'd come to see Scorpions. And uh, I'd see him here and there uh, around Europe very rarely. And then he ended up, uh, we did a Russia tour. Uh, Scorpions paved the way for everybody to go to Russia. And one of our tours we did, it was uh, Kingdom Come opened, Alice Cooper and Scorpions. Great bill, wow. whatever. And so me and Lenny hung out a whole lot then. And um, that was, that. I think that was 2010 when we really started talking. And I kept going, man, we got, you know, let's do an album. Because at the time, Scorpions announced, it's the end of the time. We're going to retire. We're going to go away. This is the last album, the last tour. Of course, it wasn't. 
And I had Kingdom Come up and running my, my band. I was trying to work it. And uh, I, a couple other projects, one with Carrie Kelly, we had uh, a thing going on, which became Project Rock and now the New Revenge. And it's had five different names. But um, it just, you know, time went on. And but then the phone rings one day and it's uh, Klaus going, hey, James, you know, uh, we've decided not to retire. We're going to do another album. I'm like going, oh, I mean, I was excited on one hand. On the other, I know that meant record an album and then go tour for the next three years. So there was no, and they also said, hey, do you mind not playing with all these other projects you go out, going on? I'm like, going, oh, so here I was. I had to like pull the plug on almost everything, you know, because I had an allegiance towards them and, yeah. you know, they might have kicked up my pay a little bit. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. But I hated that. And then it's when we, we did part ways finally around 2017, I immediately, uh, I kind of knew it was coming and it had already put the years in motion, but I took like a year and a half off and did basically, I stayed home. I was burnt out on traveling and, and, um, <clears throat> but here we are, we got the kingdom come back up and running and we went out and played and, you know, a lot of bumps in the road with that. Well, yeah, yeah. You guys will, well, the kingdom come story, you know, you got the big hit, you guys had the Zeppelin sound. So the radio station is playing, you guys not saying the name of the band, trying yeah. more people in thinking it's Zeppelin. Is that what they were trying to do? <clears throat> oh, oh yeah. Cause radio will do anything to get, get, get ratings and get whatever the, and it was really cool. But uh, finally the cat was out of the bag and all oh, that's not Zeppelin, but it didn't hurt by then. We were really up and running and our first tour was uh Monsters of Rock tour in the summer of 88. And that was with uh, Kingdom Come opening, Metallica, Dokken, Scorpions, Van Halen. In that order. That's how wow. Metallica was blowing up and it, right in front of our eyes. It was it was so incredible. Wow. Just that whole, the, you just named, like, l listen to that lineup right there. Dokken, Scorpions, Metallica. Well, in the order of appearance. Yeah. yeah. Kingdom Come, uh, Kingdom Come, Metallica was second. Dokken was third. Scorpions fourth. And I, it's like, wow. And to be a part of that, that's history oh, my God. right there. You we know, so you constantly. And uh, incredible. So, and then we did a, uh, after that, we did an indoor arena tour with uh, Scorpions. And that's how I've really got to know the guys. Um, and uh, who knew? Who did, who did you bond with in Scorpions when, from that tour? Who was the guy that you were like, you know, oh, yeah, come Mostly on. Mostly Rudolph. Rudolph. And Rudolph. yeah, he's, he's a great guy. He's a funny guy. And, and he and I, you know, and then, you know, on nights off, because we only played like on that Monsters of Rock tour, Wednesday, Friday and Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday and Sunday. And um, so there was a lot of time to hang out and everybody like, well, hey, you guys want to go out? And, of course. What do we do? Where do we go? And, or we go out after the gig. And, yeah. um, you know, it was a lot of downtime, but man, I wouldn't trade it for nothing. Scorpions was so big, too. I remember and and they had so hit after hit after hit. It was so, and 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 getting down the road to be in the band with them, oh, and dude. not only that, I don't want to give the the secrets away. What we're going, you got to write with Klaus. That's pretty cool. Oh. That's so cool. I mean, did you pinch yourself thinking? I can't believe it. Like I was a fan of this band. Now I'm like over there writing. I dude, I and and um, yeah, I, I did the first album in in 2008. I, I co-wrote on a couple things because I was actually singing on a lot of stuff too, but singing background, I'm like, oh, I'm singing on, with Klaus, you know, on an album. And uh, and uh, I, I co-wrote on a couple songs. That wasn't so such a big deal. And But then later we did the album Unbreakable yeah. and I, I wrote completely three songs and I was like, oh, Klaus is singing my song. And we played it live. I was like, oh, unbelievable. Who knew? It is unbelievable. Louisville, Kentucky. And... <laughs> I was, I was, you know, I loved every second of it, man. Mega proud. And, and I'm, I'm, what was really great is those guys are really, really good guys. You know, it's not like I joined a band. I'm like, going, oh, I can't stand this one. Or these guys are scumbag. They're all just really good guys, man. You That's know, cool. and, you know, it did have its ups and downs. And because, you know, in the late 90s, rock wasn't really huge no. as, as, as we know it. And, uh, you know, we put that out of our record out. And it, it, I mean, it had a lot of loops and a lot of things that, that most people didn't really care for that much. But the songs were great. And, uh, yeah. But man. Hey. Well, wow. Well, I wrote that. Love them or leave them. And <laughs> uh, love them or leave them. And what was funny is 
Um, I, you know, if this is one where Klaus used all my lyrics and didn't change a thing, not even a word. And I, but I explained it. those guys, English is great, but he goes, love them or leave them. I, I don't, I don't get it. I go, well, it's like, okay, you try to explain it. <laughs> um, or like, I, okay, well, how do you explain that? Love them or leave them. It's kind of like, well, you can't take what I'm dishing out, then F you and I'm off or whatever it may be. So that took a, a he's a class is super smart and intelligent, but there's some phrases that it, it still escaped him. And I go, you know, love them or leave them. Like you kind of go, like, go uh, F off or whatever. Or like, uh, you, you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, some things don't translate the same as regular English. And that's a very, I think, Americanized type phrase. Uh, you know, love them or leave them. Would you in the studio when you since you're writing the words and would you would you give coach him on any phrasing like hey you, oh, no you, want, no, no he, you let him he, do his thing he, he came he would come into to Rudolph's and we we'd have a track down this is before we go into the studio studio because Rudolph's studio is phenomenal and uh but we couldn't make an album there so we go into the studio in Hanover and do it there but Klaus would come in and go sing like see blah blah like syllables no words nothing that really made any sense i knew what he was doing and i've done that many many times on on songs i've written where I you don't have lyrics finished and sometimes you don't want to finish it you want to listen to it for a while and then all of a sudden it pops into your head and that was one where i took it back to the hotel and it just all just 10 minutes later here's love them or leave them wow. and uh klaus i i never I don't think I hardly ever said anything to him once about singing ever. I'm like, oh, ever. it's Klaus. <laughs> he'll he'll come up and he'll make it better. And uh, he's great at taking direction, like from a producer or, you know, Rudolph would say some things here and there, but I never had the inkling to even say anything because he always got it. He always did it. He was always Klaus. He's great, man. Now, now just approaching the, bringing a song were you nervous at first oh you know bringing your song to them or they said hey throw us what you got they were all yeah well, i've been in the band uh long enough and uh you know of course i, I would show rudolph first in 2008 i co-wrote on two songs and that was an, an, a great album it was just uh you know it was the timing we were being pressured to make an album like that until on uh, the what's the name of that album <laughs> in 2008 um and we did that with Desmond Child. And we, it was a lot of songs from Desmond and they took songs from Scorpions that, and they just kind of twisted and turned them up. And there was, James Michael was, was one of the writers on that. James and, Michael right? that played with 6AM? Yeah. He's a, he's a producer songwriter first. 6AM yeah. was a fluke because he was doing some songs with Nicky uh, at his studio and they made a band. Who knew? And, um, and I knew DJ Ashmore. Gosh, when he first moved to LA and the, whatever, I, I actually, went and did some gigs with DJ's band. He had him and the singer Chaz West, who's phenomenal. I know Chaz, who who was also in uh, bon Jason Bonham's band. Exactly, and and I played with him in a band called Thrust. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Thrust. And we played, you know, all the hard rock hits and stuff. So that was where uh, I got off track. But that's where um, we. I was working with James Michael and Desmond was. He was his thing was vocals, and um. um the, on the 2008, I got off track. Because no, it's I okay. Uh, I know, I tend to do that. Me too, um, me too. We'll help each other here. Uh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the uh, Un Unbreakable was just a really phenomenal album to, to get back to that. That was Mr. James Kotek. And if you want to see this episode right now, click on the box right above here. There's a full episode in our playlist. I am Steph, and you are beautiful. And again, our condolences to his family and the fans. Um, in the meantime, we'll catch you all later. Thank you for watching. If you want to become a member and catch out interviews unedited and hang out with your favorite artists, join the club. Become a member here on YouTube right now. In the meantime, click on the box that pops up on your screen. Make sure to put your comments down below. And thank you for watching. Who loves you, baby? We do.